HPV is the most common STI. Boom. In fact, most men and women will have been exposed to the HPV virus at some point in their lives. So if it's so common, why do we care so much about it? Women who are getting their first pap smear are often confused about why they need to get one. And men can't get screened for HPV, so why should they care? By the end of this video, we'll explore everything related to the HPV virus. We'll review what it is, how it's contracted, what the symptoms are, if any, how often to test for it, and how it's prevented. We'll even briefly discuss the HPV vaccine. So what is HPV? HPV is human papilloma virus, and it is the virus that is responsible for the vast majority of cervical cancers. It is also responsible for genital warts, anal cancer, penile cancer, vulvar cancer, and throat cancer. Yikes. So that's why it's so important. There are over 150 strains of the HPV virus. Virus. I know, mind blown, right? The good news is most of these strains don't actually cause a serious risk to your health. How is HPV contracted, you ask? It is contracted through vaginal sex, anal sex, oral sex, and in some cases, skin-to-skin -skin contact. That's really only if you have genital warts. Fortunately and unfortunately, HPV doesn't really come along with a lot of symptoms. The only symptoms some people have are those genital warts, and genital warts are not associated with the strains that actually cause cancer. Nobody likes to have symptoms of a disease, but if you don't have symptoms, it's hard to know when the disease is active and when you can transmit it to other people. HPV is a wily virus. It is very like herpes in that most of the time it's dormant or sleeping. And when it's dormant, you can't actually pass it along to other people. The only time you can pass it along to other people and the only time it will actually cause harm is when it is awake or active. However, you are never going to know when it's asleep or when it's awake, which is how it is so easily spread and also why it is super annoying. It becomes active at random times. A lot of the times though, it's active more when our immune systems are suppressed or when we're feeling really stressed. It's also statistically more active in people who smoke cigarettes, as if we needed another reason to tell people to stop smoking. So when should you get tested for HPV? Most current guidelines suggest starting pap smears at age 21. Pap smears in the United States check for both abnormal cells on your cervix and, in some cases, HPV. The old guidelines were to start pap smears any time a woman became sexually active or when she was started on birth control. So, if you were like me, you got your first pap smear when you were 15 years old because you had horrific periods and needed to start birth control. Fortunately, the guidelines have changed and I am no longer subjecting my 15-year-old patients to pap smears just because they need help with their horrible periods. Speaking of the old guidelines, if you are a healthy female with a history of normal pap smears, you don't need paps every year anymore. In fact, most guidelines suggest you only need them every three to five years. They have done a lot of research over the last few years about rates of cervical cancer and they found that doing PAPS every year actually causes more harm than good and doesn't actually reduce the risk of cervical cancer. So now, most of us only have to get PAPS every three to five years. Did I just make your day? You're welcome. There are, of course, outliers to this recommendation, but you should talk to your healthcare provider about how often you might need pap smears because most women are only gonna need them every so often. As I mentioned earlier, there is no screening test available for men to get tested for HPV, which is annoying because it is a major player in anal cancer, penile cancer, and throat cancer for men. When we find precancerous cells that are caused by HPV in women, we can actually do procedures to remove those cells so that they don't turn into cancer. When men can't get tested for the virus, there's no way that we can do the same thing for men. One of the ways to prevent the spread of the HPV virus is to use barrier methods during sexual activity. So condoms, 
or dental dams. Unfortunately, if you have genital warts, these cannot be protected against without them being treated. So if you have genital warts, make sure to get them treated before you have sexual activity. The other way to prevent HPV is through the HPV vaccine Gardasil. Now let's take a beat. I am not here to give you medical advice. I am only here to educate you and give you information. So if you do not want to get the Gardasil vaccine, that's fine. But for those of you who are interested in learning a little bit more about the vaccine for you or for your children, we're going to go into it in this next segment of the video. Fun fact, the Gardasil vaccine is currently the only vaccine on the market that can help prevent cancer. Pretty cool, right? It's recommended for females and males ages 9 to 45. And it's a series of two to three injections depending on how old you are when you first receive the vaccine. These days, the majority of people getting the HPV vaccine are actually school-aged children. The goal is to prevent kids from getting HPV before they become sexually active. Unfortunately, it doesn't prevent against every strain of HPV, but it does prevent against the strains that are most likely to cause cancer. For those of you who are adults who are considering getting the HPV vaccine, let's go through a few scenarios my patients often bring up in the office. Number one, I'm too old to get the HPV vaccine, right? Originally, the HPV vaccine was only for people up to the age of 26. However, they've done more research and are now suggesting it for people up to age 45. So no, you might not be too old to get the vaccine. Number two, well, I'm married and monogamous, so I don't need it, right? Actually, as we discussed before, HPV is a wily virus. And if you have a partner who ever had a sexual partner before you, they could have an HPV strain that you have yet to be exposed to. Like we talked about, HPV is often sleeping. And so it may have never become active yet, and you may have yet to be exposed. So if you'd like to, you can still get the HPV vaccine to make sure you don't get exposed to any new strains of the virus. Number three, I already have HPV, so what's the point? There are over 150 strains of HPV. If you already have it, you may have one or two strains, but you probably don't have all of those strains. The Gardasil vaccine can help prevent you from contracting strains in the future that you haven't yet been exposed to. And there's some emerging evidence that suggests that getting the HPV vaccine when you've already had treatment for HPV can actually prevent you from getting future abnormalities in your cells. So that's the rundown on HPV and pap smears. Make sure if you have questions to leave them in the comments. And if there's anything else you'd like to learn about, make sure to leave that in the comments as well. We can talk about it in a future video. So like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for staying tuned and stay healthy, everybody.